Well, it's another episode of the end of the world. It's been a little while, been at least a couple of weeks since the last episode, a couple, uh, couple, okay, a couple of years. But, uh, you know, I started off because I was the only one warning about the dangers of COVID and how it was coming and how it was going to kill millions of people and nobody believed me. And I, I'm going to start with just a little website so I can show you all the flack that I got. But you got to remember that much of that was paid for by Putin and, and thereby Trump and uh, Betsy DeVos. So a lot of them, you know, you just have to say, well, those people were, you know, paid hitmen and women. Another thing that I think is very interesting, this is really a, a great lesson for everybody, including me, was that there was that wonderful comic uh, video that went around that showed the two brothers, I think they are, they're comedians, and they were going around the beach down in Orange County and talking to people and getting answers about COVID that we all believed was ridiculous or were ridiculous. And they uh, posted them on their website and uh, held these people up to ridicule. And it was pretty, pretty damn funny. If you go back and look at it now, it turns out that a lot of what those people were saying was true. <laughs> So the, the guy who they post, look at this idiot. He says, oh, I'm not worried. Uh, the uh, sand and the uh, ocean breeze, they uh, will just blow COVID away. And it turns out he's right. It did. The ocean breeze and the breeze that uh, uh, follows all along the coast there, that does a good job of scattering COVID. And it looks like very few, if any, people ever caught COVID outdoors. And uh, a lot of the other things that those people said that uh, sounded just ridiculous, and it'd be an interesting philosophical discussion to to try and determine: does it make those people any less stupid, or does it make them completely correct, or whatever? The fact that they had no basis to come to the conclusions they did about the source and the danger of COVID. Does that mean that they are still idiots? <laughs> are they prophets? I don't know. Let's look at another issue, though. This is the one that, as you can see in the title, this is the one that really has to be gotten down to because this this is such a big issue, and it was mentioned in a prior episode, but this is such a big episode, you'll see the follow-up to it, that is, it's really something that's got to just come out now. It really does. So if you know somebody who has a vacation planned at an Airbnb, or you are planning a stay at an Airbnb, you might want to listen to these two stories of mine. And these are not cherry-picked stories. These are the... Only two times in the last, another two coming up, last two years that I have risked an Airbnb. And the first experience you'll see was such a shocker right out of a horror movie that I just said, I ah, screw b and I will never go back. Then there's a second one because out here... In the desert, last week, it was so hot. You're talking 107, 108, 110 degrees every day, all day, even into the night. Then I said, hey, I'm going to rent a beach property. You know, screw it. Hey. So I did. I looked for one that the reviews were just stellar. And uh, the reviews were really just terrific for this property that I looked at. And the price was amazing. The price was down near $100 a night. A lot of places were getting 1000 a night. So I wasn't going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I don't believe that, that it's always a scam if you get a cheap deal. But there were tip-offs that I should have noticed that said this thing is not only too good to be true, but it's just not true. So let's 
Let's go back to the first one, which shares a lot of him. Anyway, uh, if you g- enjoy, especially if you're thinking that this is going to give you any sort of financial bargain out of knowing and avoiding uh, Airbnb rentals, or, or at least if I give you some tips on how to orchestrate your your research and to which which aspects of the advertising you should look at, then why don't you just do a couple of things real easy. I know you're tired of hearing this, but I need you to subscribe. Look down below, there's a button that says subscribe, and it usually has a question mark next to it. Just subscribe, and then ring the bell, because the bell will tell you when I have another episode. And I haven't bothered you in two years, at least not for this. You could be listening to my Beatles surround sound podcast, which is just great, and... We do a research into the missing Beatles podcast albums. What are they? It's unbelievable. All of the Beatles albums, every last one, have been mixed professionally by Abbey Road into surround sound. Hey, where can I get those? You can't. So um, to get back to the first Airbnb story, and I'll lay out the what it was. This was just right, uh, right, just right about February, March, right as COVID was settling in in 2020 and just becoming the plague that it is, not was, is, it's still here. It has not gone anywhere, despite all the people you see saying, oh, I don't need that goddamn mask anymore. Yes, you do. So the point I'm sure you're wondering what it is. I was staying in a nice hotel, pretty nice, that was running me about between 160 and 260 a night in Agora Hills. Okay, now that's in California, in Ventura County. Very nice. Oh, oh, it's in Los Angeles County. Very nice area of town. Very nice. And the hotel was nice and it was actually safe to walk outside at night, walk down the streets, you know, go to whatever little shopping centers there were. But, boy, those were creepy times, I'm telling you. So I want to see if I can save some money. So I found a really nice-looking property in Westlake Village, which is basically the next town over from Agora Hills. Uh, a lot of people would say they're inseparable, indivisible. So this one said, hey, I have an apartment. I don't live there anymore, but it's beautiful. Come on by, take a look. And uh, so I said, you know what? So I bought it for a four-night setting. I thought that would be very nice. And, you know, I'll stay in this guy's apartment. If I'm saving 50 bucks a night, it could save me 200 bucks. And if it's really as nice as he says, because the picture of the inside <laughs> looked pretty nice. They really did. <laughs> so I went there. Uh, I, in other words, I bought it for four nights. Went there. And when I pulled up, I was shocked because I had forgotten there is one crummy, dangerous, criminal-filled section on the border of Westlake Village and Agora Hills. Uh, That's just off the 101 freeway. It's actually, I think it actually touches the off-ramp of the 101 freeway going east at uh, something road. Well, it's, it's close to the shopping center, the great big Oaks Mall. And this place was scary. Just the kind of place where you see people standing for no apparent reason in their doorway at night. You know, maybe guys with their shirts off just standing there in their jeans staring. What are they doing? (laughs) Those kinds of people. So I I knew this was not going to last. But I said, well, I'm stuck. I paid for four nights. I'm going to keep my word. But uh, I'm just going to leave and I'll just lose the money because this is terrible. But So I went inside and I uh, found a lot of things I liked. It was, it was very, very clean, very clean. 
there were little notes left around that made it a little nicer. So I, I really did like it. It was, it was, it was nice inside. It had a good, unfortunately, like thirty-five inch TV, but it did have uh, cable access, you know, so it was okay. I started to go to bed. That bed had something wrong with it. It was made out of rocks. You'd lay down in the bed and it was hard. But I said, you know what? Uh, I don't. I can't complain about that. Is that you know? I'll just have to find something to sleep on. But anyway, so I went into the bed uh, that night to go to sleep. Now I think of some people are going to ask, did you do anything? Did I do anything? Embarrassing? No, no, no. I'm, I'm not going to do something like that in a private uh, in somebody else's place. I'm not going to avail myself of uh, sexual liberties or something. It says, no, no, I didn't do anything that you wouldn't be proud to see on TV. And of course, who knows what you're proud to see. But hey, let's get back to the topic at hand, if we could. Uh, what it, what happened then was I went to sleep, and of course, as it always happens, at around 1 o'clock, I think it was, I might be wrong about the time, Do oh, oh, fuck. So some kind of alarm. Fire alarm? What is it? I don't know. Cup of coffee? That I do know. Um, it buzzed for, I think, 15 minutes. I tried to find it to turn it off. A couple people banged on my door to try and tell me, hey, what are you doing, man? Turn that off. I couldn't. God damn it. So the next day, uh, I called the owner. I wasn't going to call him at whatever it was, 2 in the morning. but And he very promptly, very promptly took care of it, almost. So what did he do? Well, he said he would have the maintenance man fix it. And I said, that's, that's you know, great, okay, no, no problem. And he said, uh, he said that I'm not going to you know, have it replaced or anything because the, the three beeps that you got just mean that uh, it has a battery short. And I said, no, no, no. I did not get three beeps. I got a long, like two-minute long beep. And I said, I'll look it up. But I went online, looked up the operating instructions for that particular model, and that meant that there really was a problem. Maybe that it was carbon dioxide or something, but it meant something's wrong. It needs to be either fixed or replaced or looked at, but it was not a simple replace the battery. All right. I don't care. So what? So next, so I'm getting ready to try and figure out what I'm going to do that day to avoid going to COVID, catching COVID. And the owner calls me and says, well, you know, I, uh, it was a little problem. I've got, I have to use that. Uh, detector. And I said, that's okay. Use the detector, but just make sure it doesn't go off again. I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night, but you know, I don't care. Fix it. Well, there's a problem. I can't really fix it. I can't, the, 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 the gardener can't fix it either. Why not? Well, uh, the one, the, these are ones that I get special from Airbnb. Well, Okay, well, I don't care. What do I care about Airbnb? <laughs> uh, exhaust detection systems. What What are you talking about? Carbon monoxide detectors. What is, just fix it, dude. And let me go find something to do. And well, he said, well, okay, look, it's not that easy because the the ones that are in there are are there for observational purposes. Ding. I said, for what? Said, well, the, uh, you know, we just have to make sure that you don't damage the property or something. We want to make sure you're not, <laughs> you know, that just nothing big, but we just want to make sure you're not starting a, a fire in the center of the living room, you know, just stuff like that. Don't worry about it. And I said, what you're telling me is that without my knowledge, you're videotaping me in your property. 
And I said, does that include if tonight my girlfriend comes over? Will you be... No, 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 no. We don't have any interest in watching that. We're just looking for safety's sake to make sure you don't burn up or something. Like and I said, no, that's not, none of that is okay. I said, get the fuck out of here. I'm not... You have to tell people. If you have hidden cameras in the property, you've got to let them know. You can't... I, I said, you can't... Uh, and, and that was it, as far as I could get. It's very rare that you'll see me completely flamished, flamished that I can't speak, but that was one of them. I, I couldn't even talk to the guy. I was so angry. And I just said, you know, just make 100% sure you refund everything. And he was nice about it. He, I think, you know, he also did the math and said that if I go public, that he's going to lose all sorts of bookings. So I wasn't looking to get, make him lose bookings or to make myself a hero. I just wanted to find a place to stay for the night where I would not expose myself to COVID. So I went back to the same hotel, and they were so gracious and nice, and they just took me in. And Hi, Mr. Uncle, thank good to have you back. Oh, how, nice, how many nights are going to be? I said, I think at least seven. Okay, we'll put you in. And it was great, and I, I stayed there, although it was extremely odd staying in a hotel that had no food. So neither the restaurant downstairs nor the room service worked. So they let you bring in food, which I thought was very odd. But they would see people like me bringing in bags of groceries, and they just looked the other way. And I actually cooked dinner, yeah. I had, uh, I bought an extra convection cooker and uh, I even brought a little microwave. That's right, I, it's still here. So I microwaved and cooked food and that's how I ate and stayed in my little room in the hotel. And I lived in the hotel for four, year, for four months. So that's the end of that story, okay? But that, that should leave you with a little, well, what about you? Does the unit you're going to, does it have that same problem? I don't know. Are you willing to toss the dice? You'll later see yourself uh, having solo sex, maybe uh, as the warm-up to some uh, feature that you're watching on Netflix. Maybe instead there's like a 20-minute short feature about, look at all these weirdos in uh, their Airbnb. Look what they do. You think they're in their own home or something. So I don't know what they do with the videos. I don't know if there are videos. But I'm just going to tell you, I got out of there and they ran to give me my refund back. That no questions asked. Okay. Well, let's go up to September, I think it was the 7th. Then I'll get the catalog out here. The, the calendar would be better. Let me get the calendar. Uh, so I had no, started the 6th and went through the 9th. Okay. I found this place on the Airbnb you know, uh, app and the reviews were so great. I mean, I thought it was odd that there were no pictures, but it was, the everything said, oh, you just sit here and the view is so great and you can see the beach and you can smell the fish and uh, you can even pat the, uh, you, you know, a whale. A lot of times while you're sitting out here, a whale come right up next to you and you can pat him on the head. No, I didn't say that. Of course not. But, but basically, it was just over and over the same. We loved her house. It was so clean, so fresh. We'll stay here again. We loved that you could sit out on the deck and enjoy the beach and the water and spray and all this. Okay, great. Well, that's, that sounds like my kind of place. So again, I think I went for four nights, six, seven, eight. No, three nights is right. About two at first, and then when I... Uh, saw that the heat was going to last through the weekend, I bought one more night. So what happened? Well, I get there and I start getting nervous. Nervous, nervous, nervous. Why? Because I'm getting off the 241 freeway and my GPS says, hey, 
You're only five minutes away. Huh? That's good. But I don't see any water. <laughs> I don't see a beach. Okay. So I keep driving, 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 drive down the street. And I'm saying, God, don't don't be this street or that street. This is these are residential streets in kind of a shitty neighborhood. Up oh, here's my street, Agnolina and Gondola or something like that. Wow. Now I'm getting nervous. Maybe I think, you know, maybe it slices down the hill and ends up at the water. Okay. I make the left turn, and one minute later, little Alexa says, you are at your destination. And I look, and it's on the left-hand side, and it's just a crappy little house that looks like maybe it's vacant, or maybe it's a rental, and some thugs live there, or some maybe people left it, so it looks like that. And right next to it is an obvious... Uh, flop house is what we used to call them, but I guess they'd be called crack house or something like that. Next to it is just a big double, uh, two, two floor windows with no screens open, sliding glass door was 100% completely slid open wide with no screen to keep bugs out. And remember, this is a day that even though we were at the beach, it was still 90-something. But there were just no, there was nobody there to keep track. And I, I looked around. I looked around to say, you know, where's the reception desk? I knew there wasn't a reception desk because there was a note that said, you know, just come on in and we'll let you in. But I look. Now, the ad did say street parking. Okay? So they warned you that you have to park on the street. What they didn't warn you about was that there is no street parking. So yes, you have to park on the street. No, there's no parking on the street that's left because you're on a very crowded residential street with no parking. So that's, I'm getting really scared because I said I would not, I wouldn't stay. I wouldn't stay in the building on the right because the building on the left is obviously an attraction for criminals. Maybe homeless people who go in there at night and stay there because there was no, nothing keeping people from just going through a window that was open and climbing in and saying, I think I'll set up a housekeeping here for a while. And it just, I do have a picture of it. So I'm going to put that picture on the website. You'll see. Now, I don't want you thinking this is the house that I rented. This is the house next door to the one I rented. That made me say, I do not stay in a rental property for a beachfront vacation next to that house. If that's the house next to your house, you've got to let the buyer know. Okay? So that's, that's what the plan, that's what it'll be. But, uh, I'm worried that this real estate agent is going to tell you, oh, he's lying. That's not my house. That's another house. Yeah, I know it's the, but in my book, when I book a vacation at the beach for three days where I want to sit out and enjoy the sun and, you know, walking distance to the beach. Everybody said that. It was such an... I never found the beach. I got into my car. I drove towards the beach. I drove left. I gave up because it was too far to walk. Drove back to the house and made a right where it T-boned into a, a slightly bigger street. Drove that way for a while. Gave up because I didn't see any water. And uh, I said, I, the beach may be somewhere over there, but how am I supposed to walk there? And she knew I was disabled. So, partially disabled. So she could have told me, you know what, I know that a lot of the people there say it's a wonderful walk to the beach, but uh, it's not. <laughs> it's not a walk to the beach at all. It's a, uh, I don't know how you get to the beach. You know, you, I know, you'd have to use an Uber to get to the beach. No, if I'm going to do that, I'll do it from my house. <laughs> so anyway, so that's that's the story. But it, it was something that if you look at this pillbox with nothing implying that it is nice, clean, or safe, you will say, I'm not staying there when there are hotels and beautiful houses 
that are for rent near the beach. There were, and there are lots of them at that time. But they were a lot more money. So what this dishonest person did was say, I will use the fact that I am charging a very low rate, and that, that it was a very low rate, to justify renting them a place that nobody would feel safe staying in. I mentioned that I didn't see any handicap parking. I have a handicap sticker. Where's the handicap parking? If there's none on the street, there has to be one on the property. Otherwise, what are you just saying? Handicap people can't come here? So that remains to be seen because I'm not going to start doing research and stuff in order to do this. I don't, I don't need to do that, and I get paid lots of money to do that. So, But then the last part I noticed was, and right next to it was a very strange building that had – no indication that it was being used as a residence. It didn't look like it. But it had a huge, I would say, six-car parking lot right in front where the grass would be. In other words, for a front yard, this building just to the right, we're talking 10 feet away, had parking places. Well, parking places are good. What kind of a building is that that needs parking places? Is it a factory? Are you making something? Uh, it doesn't say. Is it a drug rehabilitation center? That's one of the guesses I had. I think that's probably it. They didn't say. When I said, well, I really, you know, don't feel quite right. You know, I don't want to pay money to stay at the beach when, in fact, I'm actually staying at a drug rehab center, next door to a drug rehab center. And I kept looking at the house from what I could see from the front. Where's the balcony that they're saying is so beautiful? They did say it was shared. So I didn't like that, but, you know, <laughs> the rate was low. So you can't have everything. I know that. Where's the balcony that you can sit on and enjoy the beach? There was none. There was none. Now, maybe if you got in, there might be a place where they have something sticking, and it turns out if you if you stand on top of the doghouse and you peek over or something, you can see the beach. I don't know. But there was no property there that if you stayed there, no one would ever know. If you took pictures of yourself, photographed it, and sent it to all your neighbors, nobody would know that you're staying at the beach. They would just think that you're in jail or that you're in a halfway house. And that's really what it was. That's what it looks like, a halfway house. Damn. I should have thought of that when I was dealing with the real estate lady. And, uh, and when I'm talking to her, well, I, I'm not talking, we're, we're exchanging texts. And I said, hey, you know, in my friendly text way, I just want to make sure you did put in a refund. And she didn't answer, but she said, no, you don't threaten me. She didn't say no, because that would have been an answer. She said, you don't, you, I hope you learn, you don't threaten a real estate agent. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so uh, my mom used to tell me it was, it was a shame that I was so smart that I was born and got such good grades. Cause then if I hadn't, I could have been a real estate agent. That was, that was her type of humor. So... I said, no, it's, uh, it's not going to go that way. I go, I'll, uh, you can give me my money back and I will just drop the matter as I always do when I settle with people. I don't have any kind of, I'll take your money and continue the grudge. I don't believe in that. I said, if you want to just stop it, go ahead. And I said, and if you don't want to stop it, that's okay too. But one of the m most important things I said, and I hope it got noticed by her was I said look you just said I threatened you now I don't have to ask you what you mean by that lady and I don't have to say wait a minute and I don't have to go back and look at my text that I wrote because I know that's not true it's not ever true so uh, I don't need any time to spend to say oh I better look into that I wonder what she's referring to do I have any liability no 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 that's just false and 
without getting into my background in law and things like that, I'll just explain that that is something that you'll see all the time when liars and frauds are caught. That is the kind of excuse they look for. They believe that if you threaten to... Well, threaten, I just made the word in there. That if, if you say, I'm going to let people know the truth as to whatever, the property you're renting, the property you're selling, the details as to the car, if you're going to... If I'm going to tell people all of the details that you don't want known unless you refund my money. But that's not considered a threat. Uh, yeah, I can see that some people say, well, that's just common vernacular. They do use that word. I might say so. But I would expect her to know better that I did not threaten her. And I'll wait until the people who advise me about legalities look into it and tell me whether that is actionable. But what I told her was, I said, look, if uh, if you have not refunded the money, you just don't. Just don't yet. I'd rather just put it both into one big barrel and I'll come after you for both defamation, for telling people that I threatened you, and the missing or not appearing three nights rent that I paid. I wonder if rent is the correct term for Airbnb. I think that's rent. Let's see. Huh, okay. It's, it's, it's an odd tenancy. I wonder if it's referred to as a rent. Is it a sh- very short-term lease? I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Some, that's some interesting legalities there. But if we take two and two... If we take one and one and make two, that's a little better math. We know that, so my first time there, I find out that uh, my stay at this gentleman's house, who was unrelated to the second one, I'm sure, that I would have been surreptitiously videotaped. And I got the hell out of there like you would not believe. And he understood. He didn't want me there at all after it came about. Second one, I've got this real estate woman who's got the property at 121 Aragon, Arandondo or something like that. You'll see it on Airbnb. And the thing that's really such a mystery that's just going to just seem to, you know, log jam your logical thinking. How... How are the reviews, which I trusted and relied on in order to make my decision to rent hers and not pay the much more expensive rentals for property similarly situated, which I could have afforded, by the way. It was not something where if she hadn't rented at that lower price, I wasn't going to the beach. I was going to the beach one way or the other. So at that point... She, her property was so low priced though that I grabbed it and 